Welcome to the Intersecting Us podcast, where math and life intersect. In today's podcast, Brian and Dave navigate the depths of AI, consciousness, beauty, and the human connection. If you're listening to this podcast, you've probably heard of the term AI, and that is not Alan Iverson. That is artificial intelligence. And if you uh, don't know who Alan Iverson is, you're welcome to Google him. But artificial intelligence is something that is permeating our culture right now. It's uh, You hear a lot of different things about it with all the, the chat GPTs and all these underlying algorithms and things that uh, are supposedly be able to take things and just do them artificially, just like they were a human person. So today in our podcast, Dave and I, I'm, I'm Brian Ryder and Dave Kester's with me again here in Intersecting Us. We're here to maybe talk a little bit about that, but kind of coming off of our videos about eternity. On the life side of that, we've been we've been asking some questions about non-physical or what we, we could even t- use the term spiritual being. And, and do we have a non-physical part of ourselves? We've talked about the mind. And uh, in the last few podcasts, we've even talked about what happens when our physical bodies die and kind of probe that. And you're welcome. If you have not listened to those to go back and, and kind of listen to those to maybe get a little caught up. But for today, I, I thought it'd be good to start with just the idea of origins. That's a big thing in science. It certainly has a big thing in math, big thing in philosophy, and it's certainly a big thing in religion. You know, what are the possibilities given that we kind of believe from all of the different data we have, scientific and other, that there, that the universe had a beginning? Kind of started with Hubble back in the twenties, 1920s, and, and now we're here and it's pretty much just an assumed, uh, fairly certain, idea that we had a beginning. So, so Dave, I was going to ask you, and you don't have to exhaust it. There may be a lot, maybe there's just a few, but if, if somebody, I'm just going to ask you the question. So given that we're assuming uh, because of the data we have that the universe, everything we see that's physical had a beginning, what are some of the possibilities of how that originates? Wow. That, uh, let's start off with an easy question here, Brian. <laughs> I, 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 no, they'll get harder as we go. And I, I know a lot of people know, think of me as old, but I'm not quite as old as dirt. Just for, for, for full disclosure, I was not around in the beginning of time. So this is, uh, me just, uh, talking out loud. You know, I think from what I'm, I've heard is that, okay, it started with some sort of, bang and you know how that bang came about that to me is probably the more interesting question uh who caused the bang and who you know who who is the engineer that's uh making all this happen but it seems like you know there there has to be some sort of uh start to it but you know things it's it's for me it's difficult to imagine something starting from nothing I, I'm not able to think about how that would be as far as physical matter goes. I, I just can't see how that would ever happen. So to me, it seems like some being had to, uh, kind of like start everything in existence. That's just where my simple mind goes. But, you know, I'm a simple minded guy and I'm sure there's a lot of other creative ideas out there, but that, that's what I think. And I do think we look at this, you know, and this is, this is why I've liked philosophy so much. And I think if you're, uh, whether you're an atheist, an agnostic, a, a religious person, somewhere in between, I think the idea of philosophy, which gives us the words, uh, plausibility, probability, which is obviously a very mathematical term too, thinking about that instead of, and possibility, instead of just saying, well, we're certain here, we're certain there, and then your, your idea is bad. You know, it's like, well, my idea may be bad, but at least let's talk about it. Let it, let's put, let the foot get in the door. Uh, maybe, a, maybe a seat at the table and then say, Hey, what do you think? You know, uh, it, it may not be compelling, but it's, uh, in my opinion, it seems like if, if we want to talk about deep ideas like this, we, lo- we talked about this at our last podcast about imagination. It's like, well, let's imagine different possibilities. Now we may have some presuppositions that make that unlikely and, and that's okay. But let's just go down that path and, and then maybe you, you'll want to run back up the path and never go down again. That's, that's fine. But back to what you were saying, you know, that the possibility, is it possible that there's something non-physical? So we're back to that non-physical thing. If the universe had a beginning, it would have a beginning. It could have a beginning that's not physical, could explain why it started physically. 
you know, because again, you get that regress problem. Okay, well, if something physical started it, then we got to go back behind it. And certainly it doesn't take a, you know, a you know, theologian to say that, you know, obviously this could be a definition of God. And I don't have any trouble with that. I mean, there's different views of that. And I, I think that's fine. But again, if we posit the possibility that a non-physical entity or entities exist, they could be or it could be the one that started. It. You know, that, I mean, that's again, you may not like that. You may not think that fits in your philosophy or your or your worldview and that's fine but it it, it let's, at least let's talk about it and that this whole idea of talking about non-physical allows that at least to get in the conversation and, and there may be other reasons why that's not compelling to people there may be reasons that it is and then of course there's a lot of other questions that come from that you know what does this thing look like <laughs> <laughs> Why did it do it? Um, you know, purpose, truth, beauty, goodness, you know, all that kind of stuff comes back into, into play. But I do think if I do see this a little bit, and I know myself, I was like this as a mathematician in my, my earlier years in my twenties and stuff. I put my, I put that in a box. I said, well, this, this is a place where that is used, but I'm not going to let it really go in other ways of my life. You know, it works for actual science. It works for my checkbook, but I'm not going to really let it use. But that's the same thing with this. If, if you limit yourself to not at least imagining possibilities, you, you might miss a truth. I mean, it's certainly possible there. So, so I think that that's kind of where all these the videos we, 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 we've done on uh, the life side of the Eternity series are kind of moving toward is just getting people to think about the plausibility of things um, and whether it's compelling. You know, that's that's obviously the discussions we have, because what are we up to? Almost eight billion people in the world. And there's probably a lot of different worldviews. But that to say that, I don't think we should step back and think, well, everybody, what everybody thinks is fine. Well, no, I don't. I'm not saying that some of the. Some of people's ideas are false. We find that out. That's you test them or you, you find ways that they're not logically coherent. So when you look at this, whatever did this would have to have some purpose to do it, you know, the cause. So we get into that purpose idea of, and we've been talking about this non physical ideas and, and concepts that come into our minds of, of in the main three we've been talking about a lot. Well, four or so is. Beauty, truth, goodness, and meaning. And I think those things bring us in. As I started, I had that little teaser about artificial intelligence. It's an interesting term because it's not, it's artificial. Uh, <laughs> you know, I haven't thought about that, that now, and I'm not compare, prepared at all to answer this. So I'm going to ask you, <laughs> <laughs> what, what would be your definition or give me a synonym or an antonym of the word artificial? Intelligence, I think we can. Define, but what about art? What if something's artificial? If you had an artificial foot, mm -hmm. I don't I know. Think it, not authentic. Not not not. Yeah, not authentic. So if you think of something as authentic, uh, it's the you know it's the original. It's the it's the real thing and it's the real thing. It's yeah. uh, like a yeah. copy, maybe or. Yeah. But do you know? And this is a rabbit trail. But I'm going to go down for a second. Um, are there any? Math, because we you talk when you said that I said, well, there's real numbers, and we don't really have the term artificial number, do we? Or num a concept is there is a term artificial used in really the math field? I, I couldn't think of anything offhand. I can't think of anything off the top of my head either. I think the closest we could get is what you talked about last week was maybe imaginary, right? That that's kind of you know, kind of artificial. I mean, it's not a real number. So, <laughs> so it's kind of an artificial number, but you know, I think imaginary, we don't use the term artificial, but it, it's got an artificial quality to it. So when we're talking about artificial intelligence. We're saying, well, it's not real. I don't know if it's imaginary. I, I don't think it's imaginary. I just think it's not real. It looks intelligent, but it's really not. And <laughs> that just came to mind. It's like, we all know people like that. Right? <laughs> yeah. It's like, boy, they really look intelligent, but you get to know them a little bit. It's like, boy, they're really not. And, uh, and hopefully that's not myself, but uh, you could, you can look intelligent. You know, I could uh, go to some dinner party that's talking about uh, with a bunch of doctors, you know, so I re I get on the Mayo Clinic site and I read all this stuff I can and try to remember everything I can. So I can have some, you know, cogent <laughs> discussions with these people. But I'm just artificially intelligent there. 
<laughs> it's not real. I've never operated anybody. I've never made a diagnosis. I have no letters behind my name. I can't give you pharmaceuticals, nor should I. Uh, and that, but that's an idea of artificial. And I think when we use that term, the idea is, and I think this is a little path I'd like to go down for a little while on the artificial part, because again, there is no, there's nothing there. When you do chat B GPT or any of this type of stuff for uh, Bard or any of these ones that are out there, there's, I mean, really, you need to, it's just zeros and ones. Right? I mean, there's nothing there when you really think it, but yet there is something there mm -hmm. and there's something behind the something. And we can, that, that's another philosophical thing. But get, getting back to the artificial intelligence, the question I, I, I'm thinking of now is okay, artificial intelligence, what would make it real intelligence? You know, what has to change? You know, mm -hmm. we get some interesting ways of thinking when we start mm -hmm. talking about, okay, now I want to know what, what changes. And this comes to the term and, um, that we probably all know. And we did talk about this a little bit in one of our, uh, I guess that's like upcoming video. We're doing some stuff on consciousness. That's, that, that's not, uh, we've, we've shot the video, but we haven't quite produced it. It'll, it'll come out, um, in the future. You know, we all kind of know what consciousness is, but I'm gonna, I want to use the term, and I think this is a term you see in the artificial intelligence discussion is sentience. Dave, do you know what the term? Or, or you, when you, you probably heard that term, um, I guess I'm, I don't want to put you on the spot so much. Uh, you know, sentience. Uh, let's talk about that. When you hear the word sentience, I guess what does that make you think of? Yeah, yeah to tell you the truth, that's a new one on me. So you're <laughs> gonna have to help me out here. Well, sentience, you know, my dog is actually sitting here looking out the window. Uh, she's a, sometimes lazy. She wants me to get up and let her out, even though there's a doggy door. But, uh, but she's sentient. Sentient uh, is really a sentient being would have consciousness, has a, a capacity for sensation and can have what we call a subjective experience. I mean, you can't see her. She's looking out the window. She's experiencing something. I'm sure it's not deep thought. Probably where am I going to go poop? But, uh, but, but again, it's, it's there. Um, and many animals we would call have sentience and we do too. But now get back to the AI stuff. Uh, would you say, Dave, that an artificial intelligent, well, I'm going to use the word robot because I think we all kind of know we're, I'm trying to turn it from just a computer to something that looks more humanoid. Uh, so would an artificially intelligent robot by definition, you say have sentience? Would it be? be able to have capacity for sensation. Let's start with that. Could it sense, sense something? Right. I would not think so. Uh, and since I didn't even know what that word is, this is me just telling you my gut feeling. But to me, it seems like, you know, they can't feel. Uh, they, what they can do is they can process information. But that seems to be what you're talking about is more than just information. It's like awareness. Well, yeah, yeah. And th and this is where it kind of crosses over. It kind of depends on how much of that sentient definition you're going to use. Because if you just think about sensing something, I mean, certainly uh, uh, trying to think of a, well, uh, when you when you go into your garage door and let's say you open your garage door uh, and you're going to you try it, and then you hit the button to shut it and it goes by halfway down and it stops and goes back up. And you're like, what the heck? And one of your grandkids came through and there was a sensor there that sensed that she was there. Mm -hmm. Now that's one, a capa so that would be a capacity, but we're not, that's just one thing. You know, we've got things that can sense CO. I mean, I've got uh, in, in my office here, I've got a, uh, you know, a, 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 one of those uh, smoke detectors, you know, well, it's got sensors in it, but we're not saying it's sentient. Um, so that's just, I've heard that see people say that, well, just the capacity for sensation doesn't mean you're sentient. Because you also have to have consciousness, which is really hard to define. You were talking last uh, a couple uh, podcasts ago about the, you know how to define different numbers and, and formulas and number systems and how hard that is in math. Sometimes it's like we got the same problem on the philosophy side. It's like you know consciousness. I think I know I have it, but I'm not sure how to define. It. You know that's the <laughs> and then the subjective experience would mean that that entity is experiencing this on its own. Mm -hmm. um, you know, so that's that's what we would call sentience. And, and I think philosophically, we almost always say that animals have that. And why does this matter? Well, 
first of all, it's kind of cool to me. So that's why I'm talking about it. But hopefully it's interesting to you because this, this permeates our culture so much. And it, it just ironically fits our eternity series so well. The idea of we're not just talking about what capacity this artificially intelligent robot, maybe we should call it an AIR or something. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, but uh, how can I relate to it? You know, that's the thing. Mm-hmm. Relationships. I can have a relationship with a dog uh, or a, a person or, but can I have a relationship with a computer uh, <laughs> or do we tell people who think that, that Siri is real, that maybe they need to go talk to a doctor, mm-hmm. you know, we're, 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 you know, most people, if, if uh, I can't remember what series that was, it was with all those scientists. Oh, big bang theory. I don't know if you've ever seen that before. I've seen a few of those episodes. That the, the one of the characters there was essentially dating Siri. <laughs> I'm like, well, everybody in the show knew that there was a problem, <laughs> you, know? <laughs> you know. And I think that's where. But but why? Why could you know? Why would we say? Well, you know, if that makes me feel. But well, because we know there's something not real. Mm-hmm. Now we maybe are getting back to imaginary. Back mm-hmm. to that. so. When that you reminds look- me though. I was going to say that reminds me when I'm uh, like in my car. And let's say I have put in a destination to go to on my car navigation system. And then I decide that, well, I'm going to uh, go into a convenience store and then maybe I'm going to take another detour. And then, you know, my car is telling me, you know, all these things that it's going to have to reroute. And for some reason, there's a part of me like I feel like I need to apologize to the car. And say, oh, I'm sorry. You know, I didn't, I didn't mean to confuse you. We're going to get there. Just, just be patient, you know. Uh, and I, I feel like I'm, um, intruding in on the AI of my car because they're having to kind of just put up with my detours that I'm going through. And so I almost feel like I almost need to apologize to it. So, uh, I don't know if you've ever experienced that, but I have to remind myself, like, I really don't think that this AI in my car really has any emotions where their their feelings are not hurt. I don't need to like apologize to it. Yeah, I think that's good because you start I, I think it's some science fiction stuff where you would they would program in emotion. And so I guess you would call that like artificial emotion. You know mm-hmm. they just knew that they were supposed to act emotional in a positive or negative way based on whatever criteria they were programmed to. So I, I think that that's a good way to put it because that voice or that those directions in your car, certainly I think that's intelligence. I don't think we would say that wasn't intelligent. It was stupid or something. If that's what we're using as a intelligence as, as being something that shows, you know, some sort of uh, ability to give correct answers and accuracy and, and, and all those types of things. Oh, well, certainly they do that, but it's still artificial in a sense. It's not coming from a sentient being. So I almost, as we were talking here, I'm almost thinking maybe artificial intelligence is almost the wrong word. Non-sentient intelligence maybe is what we should call it because it doesn't really have a true consciousness. Now that you get into those things about, oh boy, movies, you guys probably want a movie, don't you? I always have to have a movie. Uh, now this is a movie. Help me out with a movie, Brian. This one well should transcend, I think, all generations here because this 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 series came out. Movie series came out when I was pretty young, and they've since made a couple new ones. I think within the last decade or so. So I see you can probably Netflix or uh, Amazon Prime those. Uh, uh, Planet of the Apes. Uh, if you remember that, um, it was a, a, a the a, it was a, another kind of parallel reality where the apes were the sentient being. Um, and of course there's a crossover between the very first one. Uh, it, it, most of the humans were probably considered sentient, but not the next world we're, we're going to talk about. And I'm going to ask you another question. You aren't you having fun, Dave? This is a word that I, I learned in, in philosophy class, but it's a sapience that it's close to sentience, but sapience. Um, is that a word you know or care to know? I, I well, you uh, care. I definitely but. care to know. Um, I'm kind of digging deep here, um, shooting a little bit in the dark, but does it have something to do with goodness and beauty? Well, it, it, you know, it's going to do that. It's, there's a deeper sapience, um, sentience we're saying is, is, is the idea again of having consciousness, subjective experience, all those types of things. So animals would have that. Um, and so in the Planet of the Apes movie, 
the apes have something more and that's that would be sapiens and the 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 humans actually would just have what we would call it like my dog you know be sentient so sapiens uh, is marked by a it's like a higher level of cognition and intelligence the idea of having what we would call self awareness and that's I, you know, I pick up my phone. I know, I, you know, it's, see that first person word mm-hmm. where we're pretty sure that, that, you know, that the idea of, of animals, you know, uh, or a fish or whatever, they, they, they may think, but it's not like I am doing, you know, you know, we do that, you know, Disney does that for us with, you know, finding Nemo and stuff, but that's another movie. Uh, that's, that's, but that's again, that's, that's superimposed. We're anthropomorphizing these, these creatures. So in the in the Planet of the Apes series, although it crosses over at different times, but the the original movie, it was uh, of course Charlton Heston was in there, who actually really played a good Moses too. If you want to watch that movie, but uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, it, they the apes were this were the sapient beings, and the, the the humans were the just the sentient ones. And so when we go back to our AI, you kind of land in the plane back from the movie. The idea of artificial intelligence, we're not even sure we're talking about sapient or excuse me, sentience here, ability to have consciousness, but we're certainly not saying it's sapient where it has like a first person. This is me, you know, right. um, it can say it. Siri can say, I want to help you uh, or your map can say, you know, I want to help you with. Your, I mean, they can program it that way, but we're not. That's why we call it artificial. We call it, uh, and maybe that is a good catch term. Uh, it sounds better than non sentient intelligence. But see, it all comes back down to this, this non physical stuff again. And again, can a, well, l- let me ask you, this is an easy question because it's open ended. Um, do you think that an, uh, we could program a, an artificial intelligent robot to paint something that's, that's, uh, that, that is recognizable? I think so, because like I know Chat GPT, you tell it to, you know, draw a picture and it would draw you pictures and stuff. Yep, yep. So it does so, that. Yeah. But would they understand the idea of beauty? That's another question. And I don't mm-hmm. know the answer. Mm-hmm. I, 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 I would probably, well, what would you say at that? You know, would you think that they could, that that art again, I, in my mind, I got the, the iRobot robots, you know, that you know, Will Smith stuff, another movie. Um, but the, Set in there that have been programmed and they're, they're drawing the picture. Well, do they, do they say, do they really understand that the beauty of it, the subjective? Mm-hmm. Well, I don't know because you, even us as humans have a difficult time defining beauty. Yeah. Yeah. We do. Yeah. yeah. So I, I think that there might be an element where that's programmed into it. Like maybe sunset is beautiful. Uh, that type of thing. Uh, certain colors might, you know, be, uh, communicated that okay, these these color combinations create you know a beautiful effect or you know I'm not sure, but there, I'm you know it's all programmed into the system. You know I don't think it it can figure that out on its own. Well, and again, you you think that that old adage you know beauty is in the eye of the beholder, and and I think that's somewhat true. But yet, I think most of us would say in some ways there's a kind of an intrinsic value there. Of, of beauty. Um, and, and, you know, I have to talk about, I can talk about people. I mean, you know, one person may uh, look at another person and think, Hey, I'm really attracted to that person. And I think they're beautiful. And another person can see the same person and say, well, yeah, they're okay, but that's not as, you know, and that again, that's, it's what we call subjective. Um, and, and I think that's can it's back to self-awareness and, you know, see how that flows so much to what we've been talking about. We're self-aware when we're sitting in a chair, we're closing our eyes, we're seeing, imagining, like we talked about last podcast about different things, using our imagination. And then last couple of podcasts ago, we talked about does that self awareness, maybe that's a way to call, say it. It's pretty good. Uh, self awareness, does that continue after our physical death? Well, if it does, it can't be physical. I mean, duh, you know, it, it, uh, it has to be something else. And it's kind of back to the AI stuff. Is there anything, I guess I'll just keep using the word non-physical, that can become, that we can create as human beings that can become self-aware? You know, mm-hmm. can the zeros and ones, which is really what it all comes down to, can they, mm-hmm. be, can they become self-aware? You know, right. science fiction does that. 
If you read any, I used to read Isaac, Isaac Asimov's stuff when I was a kid, and he had a lot of that kind of stuff in there, iRobot and things like that. Yeah, it comes down to, I think, it, it comes down to how we, how we uh, conceptualize what these, what these things are. I think that's a big part of it. But, but so kind of coming, kind of landing the plane here as we kind of wrap here in a, a little bit, a few minutes. How do we, and I think maybe we'll leave most of this for our next uh, podcast about this part. But how do you relate to this artificial intelligence? That's, that's probably a way, you know, cause there's two different ways or more than two, but that you can, uh, learn about something by just reading about it, uh, and understanding it that way, or you can learn about something by experiencing it. Mm-hmm. And I think, how do we, how can we relate to another, a being? And I, let's see, I use the bad word there, being. Probably shouldn't use the word being. Uh, and a, 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 a robot that maybe doesn't have, uh, you know, true sentience and maybe certainly not true sapience. How, how deeply can we relate to something like that? Mm-hmm. Um, right. Well, one yeah. of the things that, I mean, this is, uh, I'll think about that relation thing, but I've got another thought uh, kind of along those lines that I've been wrestling with as you've been talking. And that, is in the math world, one of the struggles that they're having now is, can we allow computers to help prove a theorem? Oh, wow. uh, Before, you know, everything was handwritten and and whatnot. But there's been, in the last 20, 30 years, there have been some proofs that have been generated from a computer. And the math world is debating as to whether or not those proofs are acceptable or not. And so, you know, that is kind of interesting because now you're talking about something in the math world where we don't know whether it's true or not. So it's not like we're telling it to do something we already know. We're trying to figure out something that we don't know. And yet, if you can put in certain parameters and the computer can spit out some sort of answer, does that sufficiently prove something? And yeah. I know the, the problem that they were working on was they called it a four color problem where basically if you have a map like of the U.S. and you color the states, can you do you need any more than four colors to color the map where you can't have any colors touch each other? OK, yeah, yeah that makes sense. And, yeah. and so they were trying to prove whether this is true or not. And someone wrote a program, and it was, I think, hundreds or thousands of pages of output. And so it did kind of come to the conclusion that it was true, but people were debating, like, okay, can we accept that? Because who's going to be able to go through all of this output to be able to uh, figure out whether or not the computer made a mistake or not? Uh, <laughs> yeah, and that, and that just comes it comes back to that I, that infinite regress idea. So you have... Let's say you had a, a bunch of, you know, going back to one of the things I use, say you have 12 uh, artificially intelligent robots on a jury. Yeah. And then you, you give them all the evidence and then they come to a conclusion. Are you going to take that conclusion? And who gets <laughs> to decide? You know, right. is it another robot, another artificially intelligent created, you know, program? Or does now we have to have an actual sapient human being at the, and that, Kind of, and we'll kind of wrap up with this because our time's kind of out. That kind of is the key, and we'll talk a little bit about this next time. That's kind of what, and I guess lack of a better word, scares us is that if we get into a situation where the humans not only are we not not needed, we're not wanted, and <laughs> you know, and somebody or, or some other entity kind of gets back to one other movie, The Matrix. You know, where the where the artificially intelligent uh, machines get to a level of some sort of consciousness that they don't, they have determined that we're not needed. Mm -hmm. And that would be the best for whatever the planet or their survival or whatever. I mean, think about it. If you programmed something that could have multiple machine guns and all kinds of stuff, and you programmed it to say, your main purpose is to stay not getting broken. Well, they're going to kill a lot of people, you know, Mm-hmm. It's trying to turn them off or, you know, so that, and a lot of, lot of things going on there. And that's what scares people, right? Right. And, and 
And that goes back to some of the movies like the, and again, one of the, uh, that Will Smith iRobot movie, I thought that was really well done talking about the three laws of, of, of what a robot has to follow. They can't hurt a human and they, you know, and all that. But what happens if you have a moral dilemma where two of the laws conflict? Mm. Who gets to decide? Does the robot get to decide? Mm -hmm. Is it smarter than we are? Mm -hmm. Depends on how you define smart, right? So, right. Yeah. Yeah. Because we humans, obviously, we've got a lot of history to find out that some of the things we've done, there probably were a few times when artificially intelligent robots would have probably done a better job um, of mm -hmm. making a choice. But how much do we want to give up and what are the ramifications of that? So, yeah, it's kind of fun to talk about, but it gets back into that main idea that we were. And I'm going to finish up with that is the idea that, you know, intersecting us, looking at things about life and life is so much about trying to imagine and use our minds and, 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 and think through these deeper things about what is consciousness, what is sentience, what is, uh, you know, sapience and, uh, and get into some ideas of beauty, truth and goodness. To, so we can have a little more, more meaning in our day, um, as we, as we walk through it. So. Thanks for being with us, and uh, we hope to, uh, uh, that you uh, listen to us again on the podcast here at Intersecting Us. This has been the Intersecting Us podcast. To further engage with Intersecting Us, go to intersectingus.com.